So just a word of caution before the video gets rolling, guys. Uh, I didn't just arbitrarily uh, ch choose my LED type um, bipolar, in this case, LED type test light. Um, use an LED type, whether it's the fancier one or just a basic LED test light. Do not use an old school uh, incandescent test light for this testing for the simple reason that this injector is always powered on the one pin and it switched ground. So if you apply ground through the incandescent test light, you could theoretically cause the injector to operate and be spraying fuel when you do not want it to be, right? Now there's more than one approach to troubleshooting this, guys. If you don't have a test light, of course, um, your meter will be just fine. And if you have the specifications for uh, the coil in the injector with respect to its resistance, so much the better. So the thought occurred to me, guys, that after I had done that little that last video on you know how to quickly isolate which cylinder has actually got a dead miss on it um the car was dummied up as it is now um with the defect scenario but the thought occurred to me instead of me just telling you what i'd done perhaps the the process of actually trying to realistically troubleshoot the scenario to isolate what the root cause of the misfire is Perhaps some of the guys would be interested in, in actually seeing that detail. Crank it in clear flood mode here for a second. So let's just shoot the temperatures on each uh, runner here. 238. 242. 233. 95. 97 degrees. I think it's obvious which one is the issue here, right? Again, the basic acronym, factors. Fuel, air, compression, timing, oversight, rotation, and spark. There is some degree of overlap in the acronym. So again, we have a single cylinder misfire. So rotation, I think we can consider rotation common. Could you have a broken camshaft or something like that? Yeah, it's possible. Pretty much anything's possible, but we have to consider the likelihood of the scenario, right? In order to prioritize things. And I'm going to say that we're good in the rotation department because it's common. We have three other cylinders, three other pistons, three other cylinders that are operating just fine. We have a single dead mess on the number one cylinder that we've already established through the temperature differential uh, approach in the previous video. The air all goes through a single throttle body, all goes through a single manifold. Yes, there's an intake manifold runner um, valve system in there that could be causing his grief. Is it likely? It's not likely, you know? Another thing we can kind of dismiss is the fact that the oversight and the timing from both valve and a spark timing standpoint is likely okay. Yes, there is a single trigger that goes to the uh, to the coil and plug assembly from the engine control module. It's possible that's a miss or a drift. It's possible, and it's also possible there's an issue um, just with respect to the trigger uh, at the one fuel injector or the one coil. So the oversight cannot be completely dismissed as. Um, it's fully operational because there is individual lines um, as a sequentially fired engine after all, right? With respect to the fuel injection and the ignition, of course. What we should consider, the fuel, the compression, and the spark, because these all can be very individual cylinder um, considerations, right? There's a single fuel injector. There's a single coil on plug and spark plug. Um, less so, of course, is the compression. Um, the compression is likely okay on this cylinder. Obviously, it could be affected. It could be an issue with the rings or the valves or something like that, causing that dead mess. It definitely could. But we've already done the initial crank on the car, and we know that the rotational cadence of the crankshaft seems to be completely normal. So I think we can probably dismiss compression as well. We can already start to narrow things down here I haven't even looked at, looked at the car. All, we, all we've done is done the differential temperature uh, shoot on the uh, exhaust manifold. But we can see we're probably heading to one of these two issues. Fuel system. So if we're going to look at that, keeping in mind we have three functioning cylinders, 
Is it likely to be an issue with the fuel pump, the fuel pump relay, the fuel pump regulator? Well, probably not because we have three functioning cylinders. So we can focus our efforts likely towards the individual uh, fuel components for the number one cylinder. Don't make it any more complicated than it has to be, guys, right? Yeah, I could go to the coil on plug here because we're interested in checking, if you recall, uh, our, our current suspects are the injector, yeah, and the uh, and spark. So fuel with respect to the injector, is it functional? And the uh, is the cylinder actually getting uh, adequate ignition, you know? So, of course, I could go at the wiring here. I could check the uh, the power of the ground, the trigger. But why bother? Why not actually load test it with the coil itself and the plug from this particular suspect cylinder? So, I'll just remove the coil. We'll check that the plug is actually sparking. Uh, we'll, we'll ground the plug, start the car, and check what we actually have ignition here. So, simply... And in the case of the SX4, simply remove the one bolt, right? Eight millimeter uh, bolt secures the coil to the uh, to the valve cover. Um, remove the valve cover. Now this is only a demonstration, guys, right? So I've got a demo plug here set up. But of course, in the real world scenario, use the uh, use the plug from the cylinder. That way, you're checking the plug as well, right? Now, the cynics amongst you will look at this setup and say, well, yeah, that's not a legitimate test. It's not under any kind of compression load. So, of course, it's going to fire outside the cylinder. Good point. Fair point. But we're just knocking down the possibilities here, right? For me, at this point in time, this is going to be good enough to move on to my next suspect on the list. So, let's start the car, see if we have a decent spark. Of course, make sure the plug is grounded appropriately, guys, on... Uh, against the, uh, the valve cover uh, in this case. And uh, let's check for a spark. And guys, I hope you appreciate the simplicity of that test. Yeah, we can get in a, you know, we could scope it and, you know, we could start checking for power grounds, check the trigger. But if we just simply remove the, the coil assembly with the applicable plug and check it for spark, you're really checking the integrity of the entire system there. Again, let's move on to the, uh, the injector. You'll see here, guys, that the injector consists of, and this is an old school, uh, um, <laughs> let's call it classic injection system, where it's indirectly injected just up line of the uh, intake valve, just a simple uh, electromagnetic injector, nothing fancy. So, of course, we have two wires there, right? One is the, uh, is the supply, uh, the 12 volt supply, which comes through a relay. So, and the other, and the other is the, um, the ground. This is a switch ground injector. The switch ground is applied via the ECM, of course. So we're going to have 12 volts ish on the line and, um, a switch ground on the other. So let's take a preliminary look at that. Uh, we can check the 12 volt. The car doesn't need to be running actually, as long as I have it in the run position, the 12 volts will be applied to all the injectors. And of course, um, the switch ground will not be applied. Uh, that will only be applied at the applicable time that the uh, ECM wants the injector to obviously uh, operate. So I'm going to actually change my routine here slightly with respect to actually checking the uh, the wiring at the connector here, guys, for a reason. But when we get back to it, it will make more sense. So again, just so you understand the simple operation of the uh, test light here, guys, I'll, obviously many of you will. It's just red. Anything greater than 3.3 volts is going to present as a red LED. Anything that is close to ground is going to uh, present as a as a green LED. So I'm on the injector connector here. I have the pin out. Actually, uh, I have the the uh, T pin on the pin here, which is common to all four uh injectors guys what do i mean by common i mean the color coding it's red and black i know it's difficult to see there but it's red and black again sequentially uh um, controlled injection is going to have a unique color coded wire that goes to each injector of course it's uniquely timed so it would be a unique um wire color code to it so i know i'm on the 12 volt side here and there we have 12 volts okay Cool, so that side seems to be normal with respect to injector operation. Let's um, let's start the car 
and we'll look at the switch ground side, see what it's doing. Okay, car's running, guys. I don't know if you can see how much it's shaking, and shaking pretty good. The misfire is there, believe me. Okay, so I'm on the app. My T10 has been transferred over to the switch ground side, so we're expecting to see a, a flickering ground here, yeah? And what we have is a flickering ground. Okay, so we have the power and we could see the flicker on the ground side, so we have switching. Uh, I guess we have a bad injector, that means, right? Um, do we need to guess? I don't think we need to guess. What we didn't do on the initial um, testing, guys, was we checked for power on the uh we checked for power on the power side and we had it we had the red led right but appreciate that we should also have power on this side even with the car just in the run position because the 12 volts is going to go through the injector coil and present itself on this side of the circuit the driver is either opened or grounded you'll say well how can you put 12 volts to ground it's not 12 volts to ground, it's 12 volts through the injector to ground. Let me show you what's going on here. Let's check for uh, 12 volts on the presence of both pins here. Okay guys, so back at the connector here. So I'm not gonna swap the uh, T-pin back to the uh, to the power side because we've always already established there's battery supply on that side. And again, the ignition switch is in the run position Let's see what we've got We're on the other pin. We've got nothing, right? Which you may expect. You may expect, well, we don't have the switch ground there, so it's open circuit at the moment, which it is on the driver's side. But it's not open circuit on the injector side, or at least it shouldn't be. In this case, it is, because I've dummied up the misfire with simply pulling that injector connector. Right, simulating an open injector. So now that the injector is back in the circuit, let's check it again. Again, this is the switch ground side, and you can see here, as long as I've got good contact on the T pin, we have power here. Right? So let's look at the car running in normal operation now, and you'll see it's quite different. What we should see here is a flicker between the two LEDs, mostly power but then momentarily on the ground side. You'll, so you'll see it operate in both modes. Again, it's not a dead short to ground. The ground is being applied through the coil in the injector. So that's what we're seeing is the power going through the injector coil. And again, it's open circuit essentially on the, uh, on the uh, driver's side. Okay, so with the uh, car obviously running here, guys, the T-pen still on the switch side. Take a look at the, uh, the LEDs. It's a little bit difficult to see the switch ground sight. Why is it so difficult to see the switch ground sight? Because it's only there for an extremely short duration. But you can see we have the power and the ground there. That's normal operation. You can see the car is back to running on all four cylinders. Okay, so I hope you appreciate that. <laughs> This is just a dummied up scenario, guys, right? The car is working just fine, but I have to dummy some things up, which feels like cheating a bit, obviously, but I think it makes the point. You know, we simulated an open circuit on the uh, injector coil there. That was the root cause of the misfire. That's it, boys. I hope this makes some sense. Cheers. Ah, damn it. Bit of an oversight on my part.